Good day. The Fargo Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Real the Real. Um, we're continuing our series on where we, one of us picks a movie, and then the next person f- using some sort of tangential connection, whether it be, you know, a theme, an actor, a whatever, it could be anything, uh, then chooses the next movie. And it's my turn this week. Um, last week we watched uh, Good Morning. Was yep. That what it was? Mm-hmm. yep, Good Morning. Great, great Japanese film. Um, this week we are watching the 1954 Alfred Hitchcock thriller Rear Window. Nice. Uh, starring Jimmy Stewart, Grace Kelly, Raymond Burr. Um, yeah. Uh, this was a movie for me I did not see until a freshman film class I took and we watched a bunch of movies and we did like a Hitchcock um, section cool. as many you know film classes are wont to do you and, had, a, uh, you had a cock block yeah <laughs> and uh Fucking fuck! God damn it! <laughs> I didn't think about it. Tell you, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So we watched a bunch of them, and this one really, really stuck with me. It's now probably one of my favorite movies. Period. Oh, cool. um, nice. yeah, yeah. Fun, fun fact. Before we get into it, the whole like you know he's looking out his window right upon his back like the the kind of atrium or whatever of his like a this apartment complex area yep that whole thing's a practical set yep and it's huge yep it is and it's amazing and i love it but yeah i don't know there's really you guys i have you seen it i've never seen this movie oh Oh. you're in for a treat it's a great have you have you seen the uh the uh Suburbia? The, yeah, the mid 2000s. <laughs> dis- oh, Disturbia. Disturbia. The mid 2000s <laughs> yes, slight have, remake. Actually. You've seen Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf? Yep. Shia and, LaBeouf. Uh, but not Rear Window. Carrie Ann Moss. It's essentially. Is his Trinity it's is his essentially. Mommy? Yeah. It's a sen- so Disturbia is it's it's the movie. essentially based off of this, but it's uh, very different in setup. But it's it's pretty much that movie, but much better. Instead of a, um, instead Tyler, of a cast, instead of a cast, yeah. Jimmy Stewart in this movie, he had like an accident. So he he's a war yeah. photographer or something like that, and he he something has an accident. Like so he's bedridden or like you know he has to have a nurse come in, and the character that plays his you know bedside it's like in nurse, a wheelchair. Yeah, he she's great in this movie too. She's very sarcastic. And, Grace Kelly. Um, that's his like. Model, oh, gr- yeah. model girlfriend, yeah. but his his nurse that helps him uh, that. helps him out and cleans up his stuff. Yeah. He's like his maid, but she's really great. Um, instead of so, a cast, Jimmy Stewart is Shia LaBeouf. In this yeah, movie. He, Shia LaBeouf has a <laughs> um, what is it? A tracking device on his wrist or in his on his ankle, so he he's like yeah house arrest instead of yeah house cast. arrest. Yeah, so a little differences, but same kind of plot about like and you know, it's a house. It's houses, not. You know, apartments. Correct. But so, yeah. do do we want to hold back on the connective thread on this one again? Um. Yeah. Sure. Because I I like trying to make my own figure like, it out. J- yeah, yeah, my own. Especially guess since you haven't seen this before. Thinking. Especially yeah. since you haven't seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the connecting thread is too. And I'm trying. Yeah, to, I'm trying I, uh, to connect it right now because I've seen the movie a couple times. Yeah, I like our spread that we've had so far, though. Like we definitely started in in rocky waters where we knew what we were getting into. We started <laughs> and, in, in in standard real the real territory where it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Master of Disguise is a great springboard. But I I would argue the other two are still real the real territory. But like, uh, oh, absolutely. But uh, I just, yeah, it's it is quite the jump there. From Master of Disguise, oh, yeah. Good Morning, to fucking 
rear window. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm, I, when we, when we come back around full circle the first time, I'll be, be interested to see how that happens. Yeah. Right. Once we hit that fucking, just that stinker that we know one of us is going to do at some point. Yeah. I have a few others. Great. I have a few others that I know you guys haven't seen that I'm, I'm hoping that I could find a connecting tissue to. But Hell yeah. We'll get there eventually. So without further ado, I think we're going to jump into Rear Window, the 1954, yeah, did you say? 54. Alfred Hitchcock thriller. Be right back after the feature. <laughs> And now, our feature presentation. <laughs> oh, dude, I had a Paramount release. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, was the rear window. That's... What'd you, what'd y'all think, Wilson? Uh, you never seen it. Jimmy is pretty cool. That was <laughs> wonderful. Like, right? I, I, I was, I was wondering a little bit in, like, I wonder how long this is, because mm -hmm. the, that I mean, you can tell why they call Hitchcock the master of of horror. Yeah. It, the the pacing and and the racketing of the tension was like perfect yep exactly it was a basically a, the whole thing was a build right mm -hmm. build up and then like we were talking about like how how important sound was to it too because like the whole time you're just filled with you know sounds of the city the different people in the apartments the music all that stuff um, leading up to our finale, which is just completely silent, right? Yep. And just ratcheting up that that tension even more. Yeah, good mystery, good um, setting. Just like I don't, I'm not sure if I caught the thread yet. I'm guessing yeah. that I'm guessing that it's just a bunch of people being it's nosy. A couple things. Maybe it's the, it's part the no, of it. nosy neighbors picking out on you know other neighbors and it's 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 part of a reason yeah there's a couple yeah, reasons my, I picked it my read on the thread was like good morning was a lot of um, like peeks into these little different parts of the same world. And that obviously happened here with the different apartments and everything. Yep. Um, and there's a second part of it. I don't know if I really picked up on what that was. But... All right. So what it was for me was one setting as char is like a character, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the everything about the setting played into the story right kind of similar to how it did in good morning as well where the this little you know village whatever neighborhood played a role a big role in the central story and then you know kind of getting these glimpses right at these very specific things the other part is um is have <laughs> It's the directors having very specific shooting styles or like camera things, right? Sure. With the dude in Good Morning, he was, you know, the static shot, right? Mm -hmm. um, was a big part of it. In this, it's, you know, you know, all the little, the Hitchcock things, the angles, you know, he likes that, that high angle down quite a bit. Right. Um, stuff like that. Um, and where it, 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 and come to think of it too, it's the, it's that it's not a very big story either. Right. 
True. It's a very specific thing. And it's a bunch of small stories. It's like little vignettes of yep. the other people's that play into it, yeah. right? Yeah. So those, that's kind of that's what the thread was essentially. Um, but that's and that's why I like this movie too. Is like because dude's bored, right? So it's like he's watching TV, right? He's flipping channels, looking at the different apartments. You know, seeing what, well, what's the newlywed couple doing? They're fucking again? Okay. Yep. What's the, you know, what's the um, the Miss Torso doing, right? The ballet dancer. Um, you know, checking in on all these different things uh, until he stumbles across this little interesting tidbit. Um, yeah, just uh, general, my... Other thing which I kept bringing up was just my general amazement with that as a practical, like, set, a built set, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a, you know, they weren't on location anywhere or whatever. That whole thing was built. You know, even, like, the skyline in the background was a bunch of miniatures, right? Or and like matte painting, too. Yeah. And how, like, yeah, and how simple yet, like, effective that one little alleyway that goes out to the street is yeah where you just see a little bit of the street and you see like the restaurant across the street and like you see various things of people gathering like kids playing cars driving by like thorwald leaving just to yep thorwald leaving fucking miss lonely heart across the street mm -hmm. at the at the uh fucking restaurant and then, like, little little touches like that, that, like, you could totally, would totally be an afterthought for some people, but it just, like, not old fucking good old Al Cock, dude. Al Cock ain't forgetting none of that shit. There's no hitch in and his cock, dude. One thing that impressed me with how effective this movie is yep. was that um, every every single scene took place in Jeff's apartment, except for yep. the very end when he went out the window. Exactly. And you never got bored because, because he's always looking out and there's always like these same threads of these different people in their apartments to kind of follow. And you can see their progression. Right. And it just like, I was, I was just captivated by it. And I, I said this at one point, like, I don't, I can't tell you that I've seen another Jimmy Stewart movie, but You've seen it's a I wonder, found him wonderful life. I've never seen that. Okay. But I, I found him his. to be very, very endearing. Yeah. Yep. Even though endearing, you charming. could, yeah, you could see him to be like kind of. He was un... flawed. Yeah. Where he, he, his nurse was saying to him, you've got this perfect girl and like, that you'd be a fool not to marry her. But he's like, Oh, it's, it's not what I want. She's not, she's not simple. Right. And well, he, you kind of he, get where he's coming from. Right. He says she's too yeah. beautiful to whatever really high maintenance. And I think part of that, <laughs> I think there's, there's a, a metaphor in there for, you know, him breaking out of his, his bubble, his safe zone. Right. Yeah. These are all like the things he'd have to he'd have to change or 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 like he'd have to step outside his comfort zone to be to deal with <clears throat> and then like and that's kind of even um, that end confrontation where Thorwald um, goes into his apartment it's that place is no longer safe right because yeah. he has mm -hmm. broken into that bubble. So it's not safe for him anymore. So what happens? He goes out the window, right? It's not safe anymore. And that, um, that ties into the title of the movie, Rear Window. It's like yep. it all comes, you know, he looks out the rear window. The whole movie takes place. I don't know if you noticed, like and that, he meant for the, the curtains to go up, which is basically yep. his shutters or his, his blinds going up. And then when the movie ends, yep. the blinds go back down. Mm -hmm. yep. And then, um, and uh, yeah, he him going well, out the window at the end. And he says too to the uh, to the cops when he is um, calling in about um, Lisa being in his apartment in that other guy's apartment. He even says he's like, 
the apartment on the second floor, the rear window or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, right. In the rear. That too. Back. Yep. In the rear of the building. Yeah. Um, he, you, yeah. you definitely, you can, you can get a sense that he's um, like, he is part of his personality is that he is an observer which is yes like, he's a photographer right he's which a is... photographer and he's a journalist <laughs> to some degree so he's used to just being the person to be that fly on the wall to capture everything yep. and not be he doesn't participate in it. yep exactly and so when he's set up in a cast sitting in a chair for like seven weeks he goes back to what yep. he knows and he's observing the world around him and he gets, yep. it's like you said, it's like his TV. He is so invested in every single one of these little stories that he can see playing out in front of him. That's all framed up nicely, right? Like a picture. Um, but even, even like a journalist where he, his, his goal wasn't to get money out of Thorwald. It wasn't oh. to like make sure that he saw justice. It was to find out what the story was, what the truth was, what was happening. Cause Yep. When Thorwald yep. broke in at the end, he's like, "What do you want? Do you do you want money? I don't have money." He didn't. He didn't have an yeah. answer. No, and like, and two, you're saying he's an observer. He doesn't participate. He doesn't, you know, intervene or anything. The one time it happens is when Lisa's in trouble and he wants yeah. to do something, but he can't. Right. But that shows Which, some kind of character progression or what he like truly yep. feels deep down like he might be denying that she's right for him or for getting married yep. but when it comes down to it when she's threatened he he shows his true colors and he's like no and he says to her too like i don't know what i would have done if anything had happened to you yep. yeah that, that was you the whole see thing that... with him when he yeah when i yep. mentioned that he turns around and she's so like elated with the situation that they just did like you know yep he, she, she put the letter underneath when his he door starts... and then he yep. she comes he back breaking and, He's like, wow, I really like this chick. She's, you know, and she's. He can see she's making an effort, right? Yeah, yeah. And like I, and he, like that's the, there is that progression from the beginning, right? He is staunch in what he is at the beginning, and then slowly throughout it, as this as this investigation of his goes on, he starts breaking more, right? Instead of being alone, now he has, you know not just one person there sometimes he's got two or three and like the, all these people bringing these people in right instead of keeping them away and uh until the end there when you know she is there in his apartment with him he he almost seems like he is disappointed in himself or unhappy like he knows who he is and he's yeah he, he he seems like an adrenaline junkie where he wants to cover these really like he wants to be out there roughing it he wants to be like the thick of it, it getting I these think stories he thinks he needs it yeah i think yeah. he think he but he needs it he, and he's scared he's so set in his ways yeah he's he's scared of change but maybe yep. like deep down he knows that he needs that kind of kick in the pants to to yep. do something different yep. he's scared and he doesn't he he thinks he needs it and he doesn't think he has the power to change that and doesn't think anything can change that even if he's, you know, in this lonely existence, you know? I could almost see this. I, I practically, I don't know how you would pull this off, but I could almost mm -hmm. see this being a stage play. A lot of yeah. Hitchcock stuff could be stage plays. I know. Because a, it's, it's... a lot of his stuff takes place in one setting or in one spot. Yeah, it's very intimate, and like you said, the the location is the is a character in itself. Mm -hmm. And yep. I liked that he, like, once he once he saw how adventurous Lisa was willing to be, he got like he was bragging about it. He was like, "Oh, you should have seen her. She broke into this fucker's place." And yep. like He was so but brazen then, about it. Yep, and he was proud. He was like, "Oh, she can she can hang right." But then yeah. he sees what, he, but then he sees the consequences, right? And then he's like, and, and then I think that makes him realize then is like, like that she made that effort and wants to be a part, and she can change. But he realizes this is too much, like she he and he doesn't want her to be in danger, 
but he wants to be with her still, right? It's different from earlier where he's like, no, we can't be together because this is dangerous. This is like, this is like, oh, maybe this is cool. Oh no, right, this is dangerous, but I can't not be with her, right? Yeah. It's like he has that realization. Yeah, he has good. He, almost, he has a good growth. He almost yep. seems too set in his ways. Where like at the beginning, he's talking to somebody that he like works for at whatever business he works yeah, for. Yeah, his uh, his publisher. Yeah, his magazine. Where he's like, ah, oh, you gotta get me. You gotta like. I wish I could go on this story, yeah, but he almost seems like he's disappointed that he is living this life. Yeah, you, like he, he realizes he without his job. Like Without his job, he has nothing, right? Without what he does, he's there's no life. He has no life well, but his job. I mean, I mean his job specifically. Like it almost seems like he's he's used to it, and he knows that he could do it, but he almost right. doesn't seem happy about it. Oh right, right. He's Where just he's kind of resigned himself. Ways. Yeah, resigned himself yeah, to like this is how it's going to be. It's almost become blasé to him. Now let, right, let me guys right. uh, let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. Besides Jeff and everything in his apartment and Thorwald, who yeah. do you think is the most important uh like other apartment in this complex as as far most as it pertains to the story? Other. Lonely Hearts. Apartment. Lonely Hearts probably. Yeah. She kind of I think Jeff sees some of himself in her because she's lonely. And maybe he'll yep. end up that way eventually if he doesn't start settling down. Like, um... yeah. And then, and then he also why it's kind of perfect then that she ends up with fucking piano man is um, is that like I think he he sees himself in him too, where he is immersed in his work but unhappy with the results, right? right. Unhappy mm -hmm. with where it's at. So then he sees these two reflections of himself or get together and become happy right yeah so good point. yeah both, it's, that's a good point yeah. both he and the, and the and the musician have this passion for the thing that allows them to be what they are yep. either musically yep. creative or an observer but they don't yep. like how they don't like how they are tied down by like what they yep. do that allows them to do what they want to be you know yep like Music man, you probably guess that he wants to make music. He wants to be creative and express yep. himself in that way, but he doesn't like to meet other people's demands of like, oh, it's not good enough or whatever yeah. it is. Or his own his own personal demands of it, right? And it's dragging yeah. him down, right? And he, he doesn't saw wanna... he had that party, but he was <laughs> overall uninterested. He doesn't want to end up also like Thorwald, you know? <laughs> yeah. Unhappy right. in his marriage and like yeah. a wife that's nagging to him and and that was a big theme too, like wives nag, and it's like not nowadays they, you know, discuss. <laughs> we have conversations, but yeah, right. Thorwald was stuck I, in the old ways where his wife was nagging him. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think they, he they came bring to that see up. it that way they, too. They even bring that up of of being married, and the, gets to a point where the wife starts nagging and all that stuff. That becomes they actually like bring that up early in the movie. Yeah. as well i forget the, if it's in the conversation with his i think it's the conversation with his uh nurse she brings that up but um yeah and i think i think that's i think part of it too is like each of those little vignettes are either you know to him reflections of himself or fantasies right you know there's the fantasy of the attractive girl across the way there's the uh, there's the fantasy of the newly couple that can't keep their hands off each other, right? There's that I don't know what fucking what fucking hearing aid lady is, but or the dog people, yeah, <laughs> or the dog people, but um, but like I, I think you know stuff like that also plays into it as well. Um, but it's just like us when we watch TV or watch movies, right? We escape, and there's a uh, it's escapism, and it's you know, maybe a fantasy or or situation that we can see ourselves in or wish we were in, right? Yeah, and it's it's so great. Like, um, I've been watching this Steve Martin and Martin Short show on Hulu. Oh yeah, Only Murders mm -hmm. in the Building. Where yeah, they 
you know, get together and they make a podcast about a murder that happened in their building. And I think right. like, if you look back, like that was their entertainment was, you know, they didn't have TV. They had radio plays and things like that. They were listening to, you know, crime dramas on the radio. So basically like going back to right. broadcasts, maybe that, you know, incited them to do this investigation or, you know, they had nothing right. really else to do and they came up with their own crackpot theories and other stuff. And right. I, just found, I just found it fun when they, they all came together and the girls were way more invested than yeah. Jeffrey was. <laughs> He's like, well, well, wait, he a was, he is, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's old hat for him, right? This yeah. is something he does for a living, right? And so he's he's used to this this process. They're not usually in that situation, so they're excited, you know. Um, and it, one thing one thing that I I have to bring up that I absolutely love about it is at the end there when Thorwald co- goes over to his place is when Hitchcock just goes full tilt Hitchcock. He's like, yeah. all right, mm-hmm. we've had pretty straight on shots this whole time. Everything's been, you know, pretty evenly lit. Let's fucking, we're doing fucking angles. We're doing fucking shadow. I'm going full tilt Hitchcock right now. <laughs> like, like he gets those, 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 you know, kind of diagonal, uh, like up, upward shots. He gets the fucking, that shot of, Fuck it. I know Wilson, you you recognize it. Uh, that shot when Thorwald walks in, and you get that nice just lit on his eyes, on yeah, his the face d- there. Real dramatic lighting. Yeah, uh, that's what like. That's what I'm just like. Ooh, Hitchcock going full tilt. Hitchcock. He's like, it's time, guys. Yeah. It's time. You know you're yeah, in it. Like you're just steeped in this. You. It's been building yeah. the tension the entire time, and you know that you're at the release. Yep. It's like I'm. I'm I've been pulling these. You know. Pretty standard shots throughout this. Now, uh, now I'm going full tilt. It's my time now. <laughs> time to shine. This is it's my time. This is a suspense or thriller, however, yeah. however you want to ca- categorize this movie. But this is a suspense movie that I I feel like for me would almost fit any mood. Like yeah. Tyler, you said it would be a it's a really good rainy day movie. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. Okay. There's so many different. Like if you if you want to just feel good, you yeah. can do that. So much of this movie is just like enjoying nice conversation with people, the interplay between yep. characters, seeing these vignettes play out until yep. the very end when it's like, okay, now shit's getting serious. Yep. Or you can and get real you... like introspective and kind of dour with it. Like, oh man, am I yep. stuck in a rut where I don't feel fulfilled by the thing that I'm trying to like express myself with? Yep. You can lean into the fucking goofy stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> you can you can lean into the suspenseful, like fucking tense parts. Like there's it's literally like there's so many facets of this movie that just work for various moods. It's a, yeah, God it's a damn it, you guys. I know dude. It's it's you it's guys great. have set the bar so high that I have no <laughs> choice but to like dude unbeknowingly I, I... torpedo this. I couldn't help it after fucking good morning because I was just so charmed and it like it just again just like oh shit Tyler just fucking pulled out a great one. And I was like <laughs> and thankfully the whole time I was kind of thinking of setting his character during that movie and I was just like fucking I'm going to fucking whip out my big old Hitchcock on this. <laughs> No, setting as character I, is a good thread. I like that thread. Yeah. Yeah. I've it's, uh... been thinking to myself as we've been having this discussion, like, okay, what are some examples that I can think of of setting as character? And the two mm-hmm. big ones that stick out to me are ones that we've already watched, either for real yeah. or real, or that we've talked about, like, it's, many, many times, gotta, or that I, I know that we've all seen You gotta pick before. up a different strand, man. Pick up a different strand. Well, my other strand was people... Directors appearing in their own movie. You could do that one. Well, <laughs> people pretending to be those that they aren't or putting on a facade of some kind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I don't know. You I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to just, really give this some good thought. Just do, a, just do a directors in their own movie and just pull out an M. Night Shyamalan movie. 
Oh God. <laughs> Cause no, he's just, you. cause he's just, you know, he pulled that from Hitchcock too. Right. So yeah, but he would I don't know that act. I've ever seen a Shyamalan movie that I, Oh wait, no, I take that back. I was going to say, I don't know that I've ever seen a Shyamalan movie that I actually enjoyed, but split yeah. was pretty good. Really? Split was good. Yeah. I enjoyed split. You don't yeah. like signs. I enjoy signs. I've never seen signs. Yes. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. No. I know that's a bold face lie. But that night that we had a sleep. Oh, wait, no, that no, that, that we didn't watch sleep. signs. Well, we didn't watch signs. We watched turtles. That's why I yeah. got signs mixed up. God damn it. Uh-huh. Six cents. What about six cents? Never seen it. Unbreakable. Never seen it. Lady yeah. in the water. Uh, never seen it. <laughs> no, I never yeah. saw that. Avatar. <laughs> I mean, sadly, yes, the I've last seen that. I did not <laughs> Damn enjoy it. it. Damn it! Um, yeah, that's there is some that's hits. True, then. He has some hits. Six Sense, Signs, um, Unbreakable. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, and I'm not great. saying they're bad. I mean, all of them are just not for me. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, all of them have a level of cheese to them. Oh, for sure. I mean? Yeah, they do. Um, but. Well, six cents yeah. maybe is a little less cheese, more less cheese. Well, maybe some like. You know, the, the twist in and of itself, especially the Shyamalan twist in and of itself, is a bit of cheese. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that became so memed after, like, oh, oh yeah. did you know that? Okay. Yeah. That's his thing, dude. He's got to have the a twist. The movie that I'm going to choose for us to watch next time is going to be Scary Movie 2. Oh. <laughs> just, just fuck it. It's not going to be OG no, no. Godzilla. Do what, you, do what you were going to do. Think about it. Mull I it know. over. I, I'm I'm joking. Just mull it over. <laughs> do do a little do a little do a little thinking. I absolutely you don't need I, to have it now. My thread is not going to be the same thread that you guys maybe picked no, up on. No, like, no, 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 don't, it's, don't, don't, don't. Make it's it going to be a, maybe a bit more esoteric or just maybe one that you're yeah. not expecting. If you can make a good thread, argument yeah. for it, I mean, I made an argument for the farting because that was the yeah, running joke that all, I didn't. Both like. of ours weren't. Both of ours weren't like predictable uh threads right they were just things that triggered some some inspiration in yeah us, honestly some memory if, if this movie made you think of other movies then that's the movie you should go with yeah but don't tell us or don't tell me yeah it, it didn't you'll really. have to tell tyler but i was i was so invested especially for my first viewing i really wanted to drink yeah. this whole thing in and yeah, my mind was not straying very much. Sit with it. Which Sit with it a couple. Is a days. sign of a good movie. Yeah, maybe even yeah. watch it again on your on your own, and then definitely. Very true. Very it's true. A, it's a great rewatch too, and very short. Yeah, it's not yeah, very how long. How long was that? Like that was sub two hours for sure. Yeah, in total, I think yeah. it was an hour and fifty two. Yeah. Okay. Which is like perfect, especially for like a movie again, which is. Has literally like one outside of the big ass set that is that whole fucking thing. Like it only has one set. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's his his fucking apartment and the view out of his apartment, and that's it. Yeah, it's impressive. Like that the the apartment that he li- that Jeff lives in is is almost like where the director's chair would be it's the place where everybody Mm -hmm. views Mm -hmm. the cameraman yeah it's just i mean there's a reason that this is a classic there's a reason that this is lauded as such a great film is because it is good great like yeah i'm i'm glad that i watched it i want to know because like i think when i watched this movie it wasn't the first one I think we started... Is North by Northwest the only one that takes place on a train? Or does he have another one that takes place on a train? Uh, yeah, that's... that's uh, Or what is the... I yeah, North, by, North Northwest by Northwest is for the... For a long time. It's the mistaken identity one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that takes place on a train. Carrie, Carrie Grant. So I, th- I think we watched that one first. Like, we watched a couple before we got to this, and, like, some I was, like, like, I didn't dislike any of them. Uh, There's always something kind of, there's always something intriguing, and, like, especially queuing into, like, his specific, like, shooting 
like his his camera how he shot stuff and like the lighting and all that like the hitchcock stuff um that i clued in on like all was pretty cool it finally clicked with me when i saw this movie this and vertigo those vertigo two movies are when is a, it really is another good one me. another good one for his yeah. shot stuff and seen he it. does that same uh he does that same uh fall shot too yep the fall shot that he does with Jim, with the uh, with our boy Jimmy out the uh, window. John Stewart. <laughs> John Stewart. Yeah, with, yeah. with John Stewart. He does a similar <laughs> shot in, in uh, Vertigo. <laughs> yeah, Wilson, that'd, that'd be another one I'd recommend for sure for you is Vertigo. Or, That's um, the thing, man. Rope, like, rope There are so good. many damn times that I'm going to sit down and watch a movie, and there are plenty, plenty of movies. There's that, so like, many movies. A, a really good example is Braveheart. Yeah. Up until three years ago, I had never seen Braveheart. Oh no! Mm-hmm. And there's 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 no reason that I wouldn't have liked it or wouldn't have watched it. It just doesn't like click in my mind at that moment. So right. like, oh, I should watch this that I've never seen. I don't think I don't think I've ever seen it outside of like TV before. Like I don't think I've just watched it. Watched it. I have. I think it on, I've only seen it on. I have TV. it on Blu-ray right now. But yeah, like, but fucking, like you said, hey, I haven't watched my Blu-ray copy. I've only seen it on TV. <laughs> But fucking Patriot, dude. <laughs> that movie, that Mel Gibson movie, I watched a bunch for some reason. I really enjoy. I really like Revolutionary War era stuff. I think that's why. So, Melly Gibbs and fucking Heath Ledger. Yeah. Just for Isaacs. Well, I think we should sign off with this one. Um, definitely, everybody give it a watch. Um, yeah. Please, please do. You'll have it's, a great like time. Like I said, it's like a gold standard movie. It's yeah. It's, it's the only like it's timeless but for the fact that you know he doesn't obviously like he could nowadays just whip out his phone and be not bored but like he'd vlog other the than whole that time. Like, the whole thing yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> like like so aside from that like the the movie itself is just yeah it's timeless that you don't it's not tied up in the time that it's in so it's like you really you can enjoy it. Anyone can enjoy it. I agree with everything well, said. I feel yeah. a lot of a lot of uh, pressure to don't dude. find don't. something that will live up to snuff. But no, it well, does, no, it just, just on, I'm, I'm putting that on myself. Okay, really, is like yeah, I want to live because up to a standard that I feel like I want to achieve. Even even if you can't, like if you don't find something or think of something that is just like fucking. A, like a fucking big dick movie there is the ever entertaining option to purposefully fucking tank it because you can and that's almost equally as enjoyable so i and could but i really be, want to give us a good faith effort effort yeah, yeah it can be yeah. any thread too it can be another jimmy stewart movie it could be another be grace stewart. kelly it could be another hitchcock i mean it can be, it could be anything it could be a movie you know, that, that you, a lot of shadow it could be, you know what I mean, like anything. A dude, a movie with a photographer, a movie with a dude the, with a fucking broken leg. A rainy you day movie, that. another rainy day type. A of rainy movie. day movie, yeah. That just be game that we played from it. of doing like six degrees or how many moves on yeah. Wikipedia. I'm yeah. gonna do that with every single film Ooh. that we watched. I'm gonna try and suss out like six degrees of okay. What about this cinematographer? Yeah. What else yeah. has he worked on? What there else? Who else has he worked with? Um, That'd be right. interesting. Actors, these themes of the movies. I'm really gonna try and do good research and come up with a with a good one for you guys. Excited. Hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully, just because it's always good, I can come up with something that neither of you have seen. I okay. don't feel confident in that part, but I look forward to our next viewing, boys. Same here, yeah. Yes, me I, too. I'm excited because it, it gives us all a chance to really think about the next movie we we're gonna watch. Because it, you know, if there is a tangential thread, like we said, all the better. Ooh, ooh, Strangers on a Train. That's the movie I was thinking of. Okay, mm. there was Not a scene, uh, North by Northwest. North by Northwest is the the only like scene I think about is <laughs> the plane the plane flying over the the crop field and him diving. <laughs> yeah. So like think about Mount Rushmore. One quick thing, the fucking ten years that Hitchcock had here, fucking 
1954, Dial M for Murder. 1954, Rear Window. Great one. And then, and then, then it's To Catch a Thief, The Trouble with Harry, and then it's The Man Who Knew Too Much in 1956, mm. and The Wrong Man also in 1956, but then Vertigo in 1958, Birds. North by Northwest in 1959, Psycho in 1960, and The Birds in 1963. Like, that line is just fucking stupid. That line is pretty, like, it's dope like well ugh. his yeah his uh cinema credits are just nuts those are great movies. yeah yeah i want to check out some of his fucking uh silent movies well did you did you name rope at all did you name rope in one of those i didn't rope was in 1948 if you haven't so seen i was just rope. going within that 10 within that 10 years yeah of like like of just like bona fide like fucking hits, mm-hmm. fucking bangers, you know, like because Rope was forty eight, Strangers on a Train was fifty one, but like it wasn't quite, you know, he didn't hit hit those bangers, those he, real bangers. Started he made in it fifty four. He made it notorious in Rope. If you ever get the chance to watch it, I do recommend yeah. that one too. It is the first, technically, I think my first. Um, movie that I think I remember trying to do the single take. The movie mm. takes place in one setting like this in these right. guys these guys' apartment building. They do something with rope at the very beginning, and from there, yeah. the camera just pans across this party and all the people talking and interacting with each other, and um, James Stewart is in the movie. He plays a detective and he's trying to figure out what these guys are up to during the whole time. And the camera, you know how the reels, they do end. You can't just do one single take. Right. He got tricky. So he'd have a character pass in front of the lens and they do a changeover or they do the camera would pan into a, I don't know, a box or something else in the room. And then it would just like, they would do a changeover there. And the, there was one changeover that you can pretty much tell happens, but it's mm-hmm. pretty seamless. The whole movie is made to look like one take. And that's the first time I remember like wow. really looking at that and being like, wow, is this the first time somebody tried to do this? Like, this is pretty great. But now you see it in all these modern movies where like they make it look like it's one take. Right. Or they do something similar. But like he was a pioneer with a lot of these things. Oh yeah. Big time. Like it's kind of like, for as important as like uh, Citizen Kane is to like modern filmmaking, like so is like Hitchcock. Like those two are huge tent poles for this, for just movies in general. Yeah, the thing with Citizen Kane is that they tried a lot of different cinematography techniques mm-hmm. that have been, you know, not really thought about for a while, but wh- how they achieved that's them why were pretty I... great. Yep. When people watch like Citizen Kane now, there's a lot of people who are just like, I don't fucking get it. Like, why is this the greatest? It's like the shit that you're seeing in there that you're like, is stuff we're used to now in movies. It's normal. But back then it was very, back then it hadn't, yeah, it hadn't been done like that before. And that's why I always say when somebody brings up Citizen Kane, I also Mm -hmm. say, well, have you seen the, like the original King Kong? Because yeah. the original King Kong came up with more, I would say, camera techniques, force perspectives, stop animation, um, mm-hmm. motion, and camera pans and things like that, that no other movie even tried back then. And that was way before Hitchcock. And the, they right. they did so much for the special effects industry that if we didn't have King Kong we wouldn't be where we're at today with special effects, I would say. And that's, yeah. that's my argument. Yep. Like when people's like Citizen Kane's the greatest, I'm like, it's great. But if you think about it, King Kong is always going to be yeah. king. It's He's always going to be king. Right. What's well, one thing to bring up too. Well, I was just looking at um, rope. Jimmy Stewart's in that too. Yeah, um, I said that. <laughs> I said that. But, oh, did you? Oh, sorry. Um, he, uh, at the time when he was, in this movie like 
this was like a, a renewal period. Like he wasn't a, a new star or anything or a dude that had maintained this stardom for a long time. Like he had been in movies, built up, went to war, right? Was in yep. World War II, came back, almost didn't act again. And then like started coming back. I think the first movie he did back was It's a Wonderful Life, which is like, okay, fucking big dick movie but like and then he kind of kind of wavered around a little bit and then once the 50s rolled around is when he started popping up again well yeah because know? at so the time was... it's a wonderful life was a big flop nobody like yes it. <laughs> it was too you know bloviated yeah yeah yep. exactly and then so he started you know he built his way up and like in like westerns he started getting into a lot in the 50s and then fucking rear window Yep, like when Darling had, Clementine, uh, yeah. I think he's in Started that. doing suspense movies, yeah. So this was this was at, like, the the point of a career renewal. Like, he had been in Hollywood, made it back, or made it up there, fucked off, almost didn't come back, and then fucking came back in a big way, which was pretty cool. Yep, big. Pretty cool. Big Jimmy swinging that big. big. <laughs> fucking drunk-ass dick, dude. <laughs> He was in he was in Vertigo too. Yeah, I forgot he was in Vertigo. Yep. I always forget. My garage door starting to open. There. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna sign off. We'll be back with the other installment, Wilson's pick, in the next one. Wilson's turn. Yep. Look forward to it. Mm-hmm.